Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're talking about Final Cut Pro 10.4 new features. We've had a lot of um, information about this, and we continue to explore different features. And Steve's found a really interesting use today that I never would have thought of, so I love it. So why don't you take it away? Well, as you know, the 360 tools in Final Cut Pro 10 has a patch tool for cloning out things like, you know, the camera rig at the bottom of the right, sphere. Right, because everything's in the shot in 360, including the camera. That's right, and we've done episodes yeah. on that, but I thought, well, I wonder if that patch tool will work on just standard footage. On regular footage. Yeah. So and you're it, using the 360 patch tool on regular footage. Yeah, that's All right. exactly. <laughs> so I thought, well, one of the problems like drone shooters have are drone shadows. So maybe it'll, we can work on it in that. So I found that there's a great way to use it. Okay, okay, let's check it out. So here's something that we shot with the, uh, you know, the Karma drone a little while back, and it's just a nice shot of us on this lake here. But I'm going to get to this last shot here, and I park my player. You could see there's a drone shadow that's sure right is. there, right there yep. in the shot. And I want to see if we can use the patch tool to, to, to remove it. You can see, you know, as I move the shot, you, can, you know, it's, as you get to a certain altitude, it you becomes, don't you don't care. So close. you don't really have to patch it out for the entire shot. Just yeah. the section where, you, where the camera's closest to the um, uh, yeah. water surface. Okay, so what I'm going to do is open up the effects browser, and here it is. It says 360 patch effect, yep. and I'm going to use it as a 2D patch effect. <laughs> I'm just going to drag this thing on there, drop it on there, and we'll open the inspector to look at the controls. Okay. So there's the patch effect, and I'm going to start by just clicking this button to turn on the setup monitor, and instantly you're like, well, what the heck's going on? Well, the plugin is assuming that I'm working with a spherical... With echo rectangular footage, right? right? So, so it's right, wrapping it? It's wrapping it, and it's, it's just looking Looks weird. It's crazy, yeah. It's crazy, and by default, the patch region is the nadir, the bottom of the sphere. So yeah. you can choose other regions. So I'm just going to choose right. Okay. And instantly, now I'm working with a, an image that looks like something looks I normal. can work with, yeah, normal, yeah. right? So uh, you have uh, two areas. I've talked about this in previous episodes. You have the... The source area and the, the target area. So this right here is the target. So right. this is where I want to move it over. So that's so, what you want to get removed. Right. So I want to go ahead and take that and move it over the, the drone shadow mm -hmm. here. And then, okay, this is the source. This is the pixels I'm pulling from at other parts of this of the image, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm going to leave this there for now. And I just wanted you to see its position, how you can get it into rough position. Yeah. And then I'll go ahead and turn this off. And one of my techniques when working with the patch tool is I tend to want to reduce the softening, really crank the softening, and turn it off so I've got a hard edge so I can so you really can see. see exactly what you've patched. Right, and yeah. you can see that it's a little bit off here, uh -huh. and I'll go back down here to the target position, and I'll just maybe I'll move, move this around a little bit and here and... Uh, Right. And the sort the and then just the yeah, source. Yeah, the, sor the source radius. Uh, a little bit smaller. I, right. Yeah, in fact, I try to get this as small as I possibly can. I mean, uh -huh. and just just back and forth. I just try to get this position, find the pixels that I want to use here. Okay. And now here's the thing: as I move the playhead, it, it does a pretty good job. But as you can see, that you, you can you can see the patch yeah. region a little because bit. That so stays fixed. It stays yeah. fixed. And what you're going to want to do is keyframe the source pixels uh -huh. that are being sourced in that, in that target area there. So what I'll do is I will set a keyframe for source position, okay? And not for target, just no, for source? No, just for source, right. Okay. The, 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 the target p position stays relatively fixed. Oh, okay. Although you could keyframe it, I found If you it needed not, to. If you needed if it was to. moving around. I okay. found that in this case, I'm going to want to keyframe what's being... Uh, patched inside. Patched inside there, right, exactly. I see. Because the drone is sitting still as, it, as you're pulling hey, up. You, you nailed it. Got it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this a little softer right there. there. So there it's maybe softer. I'm going to maybe, um, maybe move it over. I'm just trying to just get it exactly where I want it. There, that looks, that looks pretty good. Yep. I mean, it's pretty much gone. So I have my, my source position first keyframe, and I'll just start you know, moving the playhead a little bit later. It's, it's okay. It looks good, looks good, looks pretty good there, pretty good. And it's looking right, oh, right there maybe. It's starting, you can see it's right there. It's starting to pull pixels from this little shallow yeah, area Yeah, and it's here. picking those up. So all I need to do, because I've set keyframes for source position, is I can just go ahead and just start, just try to shift, shift this over a little bit, nice. like, like, just like that. Yeah. And, I'm, and just like any animation, I'm gonna just use my left and right arrow key and just step through this animation. And 
And it looks pretty good. I might want to soften it just up a little bit more. Just, just take a look at it. It's really kind of a sleight of hand technique, you know, just, sure. to, just so you don't see it to a certain point. Like I said, when the drone gets to a certain altitude. You don't really care anymore You don't really that care. Point, yeah. So, like, when I get to about here, you know, I'm pretty high, and you're not really focused on it, and you're looking right. at, the, at the... As long as it's dot. not picking up some pixels from the land or something to make right. suddenly something right. pop there in the water. So what I'll do is I'll split, I'll split the clip there at that position because uh, I don't care okay. anything beyond here. I'll go ahead and turn the patch and turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah, so you won't have any risk of that. Right. Suddenly so it's, it's only patching nice. that first section, and when nice. it gets here, it's just turned off. Yeah. And I find it works really well for patching on a drone shell. Take take a look. Yeah, you'd n you'd never know. You'd, you'd never, never know. know. I mean, I could probably make some small tweaks, right. but drone shadow. Eradicate it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and you could use it really to patch anything you wanted to remove. That's right. It works very similar to our, we have a clone patch tool as part of uh, Ripple, Ripple tools. tools Complete. Mm -hmm. And But this is a great way to do it with a built-in tool and with a 360 tool, which is very interesting. Yeah, so it, nice. It's a tool that gets the job done in yeah. certain situations. Excellent. Right. Excellent tip. So Steve has a, a full, if you're interested in the real 360, Steve has a, a very uh, great in-depth training on working with 360 and Final Cut Pro 10.4, which the tools are excellent for doing 360. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio and we'll see you next week.